guys, Di here from Di's Den. Do you remember about a month ago I did this project for you that has, let's see if this one's got it, it's one that's got it in here. This is because this was the project I did for you. A little whiskey bottle in it. Well, and I said to you that I would make one bigger. Now this is the difference between the two sizes. As you can see, the box is bigger, the card is bigger in both ways. So I'm going to show you how we make this one. Let me pop my bottle of whiskey back in this one. And I'm going to make another man's card with it. So, And I did promise you that I would do one using this pocket. So I'm going to tell, pull my card out because I don't have any gift cards at the moment. So I'll use that card. But I'll show you how I made this and how it works. So let's pop them out of the way. And I'll show you what we're using and this card, well, I'll just go through this one first. This card, this old box, will hold four Ferrero Rocher chocolates. Now, what a lovely idea. Um, I did this last year for, for my brother to take to his wife who's in hospital and she's um, long-term in hospital. Um, and uh, she loved it. So I'm going to do that again this year, but I've run out of... Ferrero Rocher, so let's pop them out of there. Pop that in there, and we'll go through what we need. So let's pop them over there so that when I'm ready to put them in. But I'm going to do this in as a mail card, as I said. So I'm going to use the Here's All That set, which is, is current. And I'm going to use this one here that says, To the Man Who Does Everything. And my husband is doing some work for me outside. And I'm doing the Put the Hello Handsome on the front with that okay so i'm using that out of that set also i'm using out of the dies i'm using just this die here to put my hello handsome on so i'm using those those stamp that stamp sets and that one die out of there out of this one this is the mini pocket envelope dies and i nearly didn't buy these but a friend of mine bought them and Bought them over and we used them and I went, oh, I've got to have them. So, and so I have. So this is the, the mini envelope dice. It makes that mini envelope. Um, and it makes it big enough for a, a gift card or money. That's for a ribbon, which I've made the ribbon to go on it. And so I will show you how I made that. Okay, I can't show you how I made the ribbon because I've already made the ribbon up, but... I'll show you the ribbon anyway. So let's pop them out of the way. Oh, get out of there. And I'll show you what you need. Okay, so let's pop that out of the way. I don't need that. I don't want to... This is just my scraps. But I, I, that's what I used to make my um, pocket out of, mini pocket. But I actually cut the top again because I didn't want this blue side showing. I wanted that side showing as well. So, so it was it matched in. So I've actually cut a tiny bit more and then glued that onto there already. So I've done that bit. And this is the, the tag that we're going to do our stamping on. I don't know what that bit is. And that's our little bow. Isn't that so cute? Look at that. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so they were my scraps. Let's pop them out of the way in the bin and I will show you what you need and I should have done some of this gluing together first but never mind oh there's my other piece of scrap okay so there's not a real lot of pieces to this card so our main card is ten and a half by eight and a quarter which is a regular size card uh, A4 size width for the box layers you're going to need two pieces that measure four and seven eighths by one and one eighth and four and five eighths by seven eighths and one piece that measures four and seven eighths by one and three eighths and four and five eighths by one and one eighth and for the lid of the box you'll need a piece that measures one and three eighths by one and one eighth and one and one eighth by seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's the box parts. 
For the front of the box, the, um, card, we need a piece that measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, and three and three eighths by four and five eighths. And then for the back of the card, we're going to need a piece that measures for our writing panel five and one quarter by four and seven eighths and five inches by five, uh, four and five eighths. So because we're popping this on the front, we don't need much way in of other embellishments for the front of the box. Okay, so let's pop them out of the way. Up here, just for a moment. Go on, up you go, up you go, there you go. And we'll bring in our scoreboard and we will score this piece together. So we're going to bring this in here. And I'm going to score this on the long side using my tool with the small end and I'm going to score on the long side at five eighths of an inch one two three four five eighths of an inch there we go two inches three and five eighths that sounds a bit big Oh, that's about right. Three and five eighths of an inch and five inches. So these two panels here are smaller than this middle one. Okay, so then we're going to turn it onto the short side and we're going to score this at. I'm going to turn it the other way, I think, because I need my small section at the top here. I think. I don't know. I can't think straight. Doesn't matter. One, two, three eighths of an inch. So we're going to score this at three eighths of an inch. One and three quarters of an inch. And six and seven eighths of an inch. That's all our score lines. Okay, so this is the top of the box. Alright, so this is the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear. This is the top of the box with this small piece. So we're going to score, fold and burnish all of these score lines. So we're going to fold and burnish from the middle out. box this comes around like so and it will fold onto there like so you can actually put another score line in here too which if you wanted to which I'll do just to show you what I mean so we'll bring this in and there's a five inch line and then we can put another score line just a light one at I can't even read that now Six and five eighths of an inch. Six and five eighths of an inch. Just a light one. Because you're not going to use that, you're just going to, it's just going to be a guide. Okay, so you don't want to um, fold that one, it's just a guideline. And that's entirely up to you. It's just that when you bring this box around onto here, like so, it gives you the idea of where it's going to go. All right. So, to do this, we need to... Let me work this out from here. One, two, three. We do need that score line. I don't know why I didn't put that one in there. Let me just check this. 
Yep, and we do need that score line in there for this piece here. Alright, because we need one, two, three, four of them. Okay, so we're going to bring in our scissors and I don't know why I didn't put it on there. Oh, we'll put that on my thing. I'll do that now while I've got it on my mind. Six and five eighths, so we know. Okay, so we're going to cut up this score line to here and cut this piece away. We're going to cut just above the score line so that we cut it away nicely. But we, we don't, still don't want to fold that score line. This one. We are going to cut away the same section. So along here, just cutting away just the score, just below the score line. And just to that piece there. Well, no, this one you can cut all the way along, but it doesn't matter, we'll do it this way. Right. Okay, then we're going to cut up these score lines. These are the bottom ones. And cut this small piece on the side here away on an angle. This one here, we're going to cut away this section, so we're going to notch that in and cut this one completely away. The next one, we're going to cut down to the second score line and then cut this in half. The next one we're going to cut down and leave that one there. The next one we're going to cut down and cut that in half. And this other one we should have cut off. So we can cut that piece right off like so. Now that I've done this, We'll go through these again and I'll show you. This was the score line that we put in lightly because we need this piece here. Because we need four pieces along the bottom. But we only need three pieces across the top. Okay. So once we've done that, we're going to turn this over and we'll notch these pieces over. Like so. Make sure that the score line here is cut away. In, like in my case, you've got just a smidgen of it here. So we'll just pop the show of it. Make sure it's right away. Cut, chop this one with a notch, like so. We'll just bring in our quarter rounder and round the top corners on this top one here. Is our main card box card so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to put our layers on these pieces so in my case I don't have a directional pattern so it's fine but if you've got a directional pattern you do need to make sure that you put your direction in the lands uh, portrait style I always get my portraits and landscapes muddled up like my, my horizontal and verticals Forget that which way goes what. <laughs> I'm going to stick these three panels together first. That 
face looks up a, a bit wider than that. It is a bit wider than that. So, if that's the right width, I'm going to get my thing and chop this one. Hang on. Okay, I'm back and I've cut that. I had cut that the wrong width. So we've chopped that down. Now we've got that one correct. Let's do this one. Trust me to not notice it beforehand. I usually double check everything, but obviously today I didn't. Okay, so these pieces go on these sections here. And let's do this piece for the top, the lid. And we need to make sure that if this had a pattern, the pattern would be going that way. Because when we put it on, it will be that way. So these pieces, the pattern needs to go down this way. This piece needs, the pattern needs to go the opposite way. So let's pop our glue onto these pieces. And our wider panel is the one in the middle. And then we turn this one around so that we've got it around the correct way if we were doing the directional. And pop that piece on there for that side. Once we've done that, we can bring this around and this can now come around and sit straight along there like that. So if we put glue along this section here, along this tab section, And then we tuck that around and under. That will give me the right box shape, which will line up nicely with that edge. Now, if you've got like this one has got a tiny bit over, let me just put the pen in my glue. I'm going to just trim that tiny bit away because we don't want it there. Right, so. Oh my goodness, I'm dropping everything all over the floor today. That's our, that's our box on the side. So I'm not going to finish making the box until we've done the rest of this card because if we do, these are not going to be easy to put on. So we're going to do our back panel next. So I'll do our stamping for the back of our card. So I have Early Espresso ink here. And I'm going to put the man who has everything. Let's make sure that's nice and inked. Pop that in the middle there. Oh yeah. When I did the last one, I put, and I think I might do that again, these tiny little corners on. So I'm just going to pop this one off of this block. And I'm going to pop these corners in the corners like I did last time. So I just think that they just finish that off just nicely. Yep, yep, definitely needed those corners in there. Okay, while I'm waiting for that one just to dry, I'll bring in my one for the front so I can stamp that one at the same time, which says, Hello, handsome. Stamping done there, then I'll just pop that over there on the edge so I can then clean them up in a moment. Okay, so they're all done, that's done. Let's glue these two pieces together. This is this weather is so bad for the glue that it actually dries really strangely around the top. 
So I have to keep picking it off like I'm doing now, so that you can't see me doing. So I can stick this in the glue. Flows nicely. I do like this glue because it does actually dry clear. And I've got a little mark on there. But I can always cover that. Now, we know that this is the top of our box, so when we turn it over, this piece needs to go over the top with this piece at the top. Once you've done that, you know you've got your, your back on the correct way around. Pop that in and that way you cannot see that other score line that we popped in there. Like so. Okay. So once we've done that, we can turn this around and we can pop our front pieces on here like so. And again, because I'm not doing any stamping on here whatsoever, I am just going to pop this on straight onto the front. As I say, this is the one good thing with this glue that once it dries, I can still use it. It's not sticky there. You know that it's nothing's going to stick to your card and you know make things any worse than for wear. Okay, so that's the front of the card done. Once it's all finished, that's how it will sit. But we're going to close that over there for a moment. And we're going to bring in this piece here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, this comes flat like this. As I say, I made this, I cut this extra piece out of a bit of scrap. It has the score lines along here and here and along here. So that if you wanted to fold that over and have it so that it's closed, you can. I don't want mine closed, so I'm just folding these bits in, which I've already done because they are a little bit harder to see on this card than uh, on this design a serious paper than on other things so I'm just popping them in like so and then bringing that over to close that across like that this is then going to sit on the front of my card like so but I think it's um doesn't show up very well does it so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly grab a piece of brown out of my cupboard. Here we go, a piece of brown. And that looks as if it's going to be big enough. Yeah, look at that. So I'm going to measure this. This is on the fly, so we're going to do this as we go. This is two and three eighths. So Two and three eighths, two and five eighths by four and a quarter. So this needs to be four and a quarter, which is what it is, by two and what did I say this was? Two and oh dear me, I can't think. Two and three eighths, so this needs to be two and five eighths by two and five eighths. So we're going to cut that off there, like so. And I'm going to round the corners on all of this. As I say, I'm doing this on the fly. As I go, I don't know where I... would have been without it. And I'm going to, I'm going to lay that on top of there. Before popping that onto there. Yep. And that looks much better, doesn't it? You can actually see it better. So let's glue this onto the other piece. 
like so. Alright, I'm just going to trim that corner because that doesn't look very nice, that one. And this one's got a few little whispers on it. So I did it quickly. Okay. And then I'm going to stick that onto there, but I'm going to pop that up on some dimensions. Dimensionals. I'm going to get into trouble one day. Sometimes it's nice to do things on the fly and you look at something and you go, no, that's not how you planned it to be. So I'm going to pop that on that angle like so. I'm going to pop this one on here. And I'm going to pop that one up on some dimensionals as well. My little bow, you can see where that goes. Let me find my card that I had. As you can see, I'm put my card down nice and low if you want to, and I can pop them down a little bit. Let me round the corners even on this card. This is just one so that I could actually ring them for another appointment if my husband needed it, but he didn't, so we didn't need to. So. Okay, so I'm going to pop some glue onto the back of this. Onto the bow. Pop the bow on the front of the... Here as well. There we go. Pop him on there. Like that. Let's pop the pin in the glue for a moment because of the weather. The weird weather. And I'm going to use some of these. Beautiful... Brush metallic gems to pop. So I think that colour there in the middle will go nicely on this. Like so. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, so now we're going to finish off our box. The top of the box we'll do it after bottom of the box we're going to turn it up this way and we're going to pop our sides in now if you find like mine that they need a little bit of trimming now's the time to do that so this one needs a little bit of that trimming down the side just to get rid of the score line on both sides I just don't like the score lines left on them and it bulges them out. So let's do the other one that's the same size. Okay. Alright, so let's pop them in the bin. Oh, we need a bin that time. So, we're going to bring in our sides. Number one. A little bit of glue on there. Number two over. A little bit of glue on that one. The back over. And that looks like it's a little bit long. So we're going to just trim that back a tiny bit as well. There we go. And then, then when that one comes over like that, it will be perfect. So we've got a nice lot of glue onto this bit. Bring that one over, making sure it's nice and square. Take the pin out of my mouth. Pop back in there. I can then pop my bone folder in the bottom there. Give it a nice old squish down. 
and that's why I hate wearing sleeves. I think I said that last time I wore this a couple of weeks back. Okay, once we've done that, we can pop our chocolates in here, and it holds four in here. Just, just fits them in there. Bring them back over and fold under here. As you know, I always have trouble with this bit. There we go. And we have our box done. What do you think? I think it's gorgeous. I love it. I love the fact, I like this pocket and I actually like the fact that I actually framed that pocket on there. So that's the large one. That's the smaller one. This one will hold those small mini bottles. These one will for, hold four Ferrero Rocher chocolates. And if you've enjoyed this project and would like the larger one and the smaller one, doesn't matter which, or you know, either or, just head over to Dye's Dead for stamping, crafting and tutorials. The date of this tutorial will be the date that the um, tutorial is marked in the files. Same with this one, the date of this, the, when this goes live is the same date as what will be on the tutorial in the, my Facebook group called Dye Stand for Stamping, Crafting and Tutorials. Um, just go under Files and you'll find the file there. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of my other projects, please subscribe. That way I can bring you more things. If you want anything, you know, like if you've got any suggestions for me on what to do or what you'd like me to see me to make please let me know um, my email address is at the bottom down here with the link for the youtube uh, the facebook group don't forget to press that bell button as well so that you don't miss other projects and i will see you again next week bye for now